Good evening. I'm Zara Gennard. Welcome to the studio this evening. So, we will be doing some more rug. Let me, I'm going to change colours this. So I'm just going to pull this new out of here. You know things are just going to be awkward and trying them not to be. Right. And we'll take that thread out of there and just move that to one side. So yes, tonight um, I do have a laptop I want to work on. So this stream every short, we will see. We'll see. Depends on how things are going and all sorts of stuff like that. So let's do what I don't know. The dark green and the white. Yeah, why not? So dark green wool. Yes, yeah, so I have an old laptop. She's on the desk there. Oh, it's an old laptop. And the, uh, at one point, before it got replaced, it got dropped on its power connector. It's not a great thing to happen. And I think it's, it probably bust the power connector off the board, or at least damaged it enough, cracked the circuit board perhaps. So it's really finicky about where whether there's any power supplied. And the screen is also cracked in that area. Well, not the screen isn't cracked, the bezel is cracked. Uh, and sometimes it gets... Maybe even one of the cables is damaged because sometimes it just loses synchronization. Um, not worth doing anything with actually, but I just want to install. Well, I wanted to install a uh, Linux on it, Ubuntu, and I did install it, and it's fine until you log in. As soon as you log in, the screen goes wacky. It's probably a driver, but. I can't reinstall Linux again, it's just what install. So I don't know what's going on with that. So I figured I'd fix the power connector and then I'll see what's going on. Because it's kind of hard to troubleshoot any of it if when you touch the the computer a little bit, the power disconnects. Yes, I don't quite follow why I can't reinstall Linux because even sort of wiping the main system partition doesn't seem to want to, seems to think that the disk doesn't exist anymore or something about its configuration is now messed up. So at one point it comes and says, which disk do you want to set up? And you go, this one. And it goes, which disk do you want to set up? And you go, this one. And you 
it gives you different options and every option you choose it goes which disc do you want to set up you try and choose any other uh, option like cancel without setting that thing up or that particular part up it goes which bit <laughs> which disc do you want to set up Right, that will do for that one. The curved blade on those scissors is actually quite nice because it means you don't accidentally cut into something. So it being curved up like that, if you put it down, the points are naturally pointing away from the stuff that you're cutting against. So this one I'm going to do white. Just because. I don't need a lot out. I was just about to try and... Nah. That's a fool to go. I wonder. Yeah. Well, that saved a bit of. Um, I'd say that saved a bit of work, it probably has, but that's a bit awkward. Right, so now we do it with white. We do this triangle here.
is not quite enough space here, but we'll uh, just fill a bit more in. Can't quite go up to the point. I don't get the point, yeah. Right, we'll stop there. Get the needle out. And cut it off. Start off as well. And dethread the needle. We'll go back to normal service, which will now be resumed. So those two bits of triangle now look like that. So it'll start to look a bit different as we do more of this. So. Now I really want to go end to end, so it does mean cutting, but yeah. There is one useful thing about doing rug making as opposed to something like carving, because the table doesn't shake quite so much, I haven't put my tea on the table, which is always nice. Hmm. Okay. So let's rethread the needle again. Actually, before I do that, let's untangle this little bit of mess. And I'll just lay it out again. Okay, doesn't matter which end I start at, but what I'm going to do is start at this end because that's where I finished last time. So it will tend to look better if I start in the same place. Just because it's orange. And it will just carry on the orange that was there before. There's something sort of strangely satisfying about doing this, especially if you manage to get really neat sort of stitching like here on the back where I'm actually creating a herringbone pattern because of the way I'm using this uh, needle. And I find it sort of vaguely Vaguely satisfying as you, uh, you rapidly progress down the line. Now it doesn't look like there's much being done in a way, but um, I mean I'm do you know, doing a stitch every few seconds and uh, progressing what about four or five millimeters uh, each each time, so. It sort of feels like I'm really sort of getting on with it as opposed to some of the some of the crafts where you really sort of despair sometimes about how little progress you seem to be making. So 
So this is another one where I don't think you need patience to do this because uh, you make a lot of progress you know, fairly quickly. Okay, you're not sort of doing sort of five inches vertically uh, you know, every 10 minutes or something like that, but uh, you certainly sort of motor along a line fairly quickly. I could go and fill that block in, but I'm not going to. I think it will sort of destroy the line by line sort of look if I do that and just fill in a, a block. I was thinking about doing that, but. I don't think I will be, I think I will be going line by line and cutting the thread as I skip each of the triangles. Well, this one I'm just going to skip over. When I come back that will be too much and I'll need to actually cut the thread on that one. I saw a clip, or I saw a bit of um, a program uh, yesterday on the BBC One show, I believe it was, where they had the uh, new, or they had, not new, but they had the Top Gear presenters on. One of them is the fella from uh, Friends, I believe. Um, and they, what, they, what the article was about was about a company in, is it in Wales that has designed and built a prototype hydrogen powered car. And I wasn't, uh, I'm still not sure whether the car was actually an internal combustion engine powered by hydrogen. Oh, because that's kind of like what the discussion went like afterwards. But it, I thought it was a hydrogen fuel cell, which then produced electricity. And um, the two presenters were kind of friendly arguing with each other about you know, their philosophies. Well, uh, Matt, whatever his name is. Hello, Wolfie. Thank you very much for the host. Hi there. Um... 
Yeah, one of the presenters was uh, in favour of electric cars and the other one thought hydrogen cars were the future. And uh, it was it was really funny. Well, I found it really funny because the argument that the fella for the, um, who was putting forward hydrogen powered cars, uh, you know, against electric cars was, um, you know, internal combustion engines, you need, you know, uh, uh, produce, you know, it's all this dirty stuff that comes out the tailpipe and things. And then he, you know, he was against electric cars because. Um, you know, all you're doing is moving that problem somewhere else. The you know the dirty stuff comes out the power station because you've got to generate the electricity. Whereas there's nice clean hydrogen. You burn hydrogen in a fuel cell, or you burn it. The the output from that is water, and that's it. Um, but in a fuel cell, you can well you can get energy out of that reaction either in a fuel cell or in um, an internal combustion engine. The bit I found really funny is I don't know where he thinks hydrogen comes from, because the way it's produced is well one of the one of the ways that it's produced is to pass electricity through water, which turns it into hydrogen and oxygen, and the hydrogen is then bottled up and that's what you put in the vehicle. So it's produced by electricity from power stations. <laughs> And the, the, the whole argument for me at that point was that he was making just collapsed. It's kind of like you need the same power station to produce the same electricity so that you can turn it into hydrogen. Only that's not very efficient, relatively speaking. Why not use the electricity first hand, so to speak? And uh, you know, all right, get stored in a battery but it's kind of more efficient than turning it into hydrogen to turn it back into electricity afterwards because there's always losses. So I just found that really funny. Anyway, good evening Wolfie again. Nice to see you back this evening. I don't know how long tonight's stream is going to be because sat next to me down here on the table, well, sat next to me implies I'm sitting and I'm not. Uh, but on the table next to me here is a laptop which I want to do some repairs on. The uh, power connect, it got uh, some time ago now, it got um, dropped on its power connector and it's not very. <sighs> Let's just say you've got to wiggle a power connector about a lot to even get it to work. I need to strip it apart and probably uh, do some soldering or something like that to bring it back. And also one of the uh, screen connectors is probably a little bit faulty because I've been trying to install Ubuntu Linux on it. You were streaming? Ah, I missed that. How long were you streaming for? I must admit, I came in, had, had my tea, and um, almost immediately started streaming, so I didn't actually check. Two hours! So seven, five, five. Ah, you'd have. Um, time's it now. So that'd be about 5.30. Yeah, you, you'd have started just after I left work. And uh, whilst I was making my evening meal. Oh, that's a pity. Is, um, is Twitch keeping the recordings? Or did you uh, tell it not to do so? Because if it's kept the recordings, I will uh, maybe take a look after the stream. Or at least play it in the background. So what were you streaming tonight? You think it does? It, I think it does by default unless you stop it. And most people let it record them. There's a few people, I, or at least one other person, one other. There's at least one person that I know that um, actually stops Twitch. 
uh, from uh, recording but that's just because generally speaking he streams for about 15 hours at a, at a time and with a recording that long nobody ever actually watches it <laughs> So did you get a lot of viewers as well? Oh. Friday night always seems really quiet on Twitch. You're playing Rimworld? Okay. I um, quite enjoy watching people play Rimworld. Or rather, uh, I generally only watch uh, a couple of people who do play RimWorld, but um, you need it to restart. Okay. <laughs> wow. Was a, did you have a large audience? find when I'm watching people play games it's not so much the game or very rarely the game they're actually playing it's usually the person I watch people well no don't watch people no. it's how can I describe what I'm saying is I mean I don't sit there watching the person on the camera but I am watching it because it's that person, not someone else playing the same game. You know, the, the style of delivery or whatever it is makes it interesting to watch. Whereas if, the, if it was somebody else doing exactly the same things, I might find it boring and go somewhere else. Um, that's all right. Everybody has to start somewhere, you know. But I mean, you're starting with three people watching, that wasn't bad going. Um, I'm fairly sure my first few streams I literally had nobody watching. Um, and then it was kind of like the odd one or two dropped in until people had a few people that were sort of watch, would watch the whole stream and stay in and, and chat and what have you. But unfortunately then I was more or less forced into a year's break so now I quite often stream with nobody watching it doesn't matter well I mean it's nice if you know them already it makes it easier but uh, it doesn't matter presumably that you didn't actually sort of tie them to a chair with matchsticks under their eyelids to keep them open and, and clamp their heads so they were forced to look at the screen. <laughs> or maybe you did. Maybe that's the secret. <laughs> Am I giving away trade secrets now for, for the next stream? Oh, I'm just on camera. 
It's been interesting on Twitch over the years because from time to time there's been sort of in quotes scandals um, of people, you know, view botting, using, paying for a service for somebody to fake views. And it's kind of like, what I don't know quite what the people expected to get out of it because, you know, you. Uh, I was about to say you, you don't you, you, you know, uh, as a partner you have to you, know, you need people to subscribe to get any money and then of course I just realised actually I suppose you do get paid a little bit for adverts but I gather it's not very much. I know back then I was always saying just what what's the point? It doesn't. Uh, doesn't serve any purpose, but I guess some people just like to, you know, just like to be able to say, oh, I had 5,000 people watching or something. Uh, did you enjoy the, uh, the streaming? No. Are you going to do it again? It takes a bit of getting used to. If I were you, uh, whatever your answer is, I'd give it a, a, few, uh, a few streams at the very least. Even if you're not sure. It does kind of grow on you and, uh, as you sort of get used to, uh, used to it. It certainly sort of gets a bit easier and less nerve-wracking. Oh, that's good. Welcome to the uh, streaming community then, uh, Wolfie. Guess what I bought today? Well, was it today or yesterday? And and actually, Lady Zara bought it for me. 
Um, but... I don't know if that's... That might be a little bit easier. I don't know if you recognise what that might be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't actually bite my nails. Well, no, I don't actually bite my nails. The only time I actually will do it is if I catch one or it's really rough um, while I'm out. So if I'm out and I'm, you know, if you told me to do that and it, it catches and, and on material or things, then I will tend to want to smooth it off. That's the only time I bite nails, otherwise I cut them. Um, or they just break. But it is nail varnish. And uh, um, I actually got that uh, to, uh, to use on one of the cars that we have. Uh, I noticed that a, a little chip of paint had been knocked off the car. Uh, and it was actually down to the bare metal. So, because it's a metallic paint on the car, it's not an easy thing to touch up. Um, and it was a little, a little tiny chip. So, um, what I did was just take a little bit of the nail varnish and just cover, just dip it, dip it into the hole, cover it up. Uh, it stops moisture getting at it and, and helps to stop it rusting. And so it, it's a large bottle of nail varnish for a couple, literally a couple of drops, but I didn't have any. But uh, it'll be useful for doing anything, odd sorts of things. I mean, even like sort of just you know, gluing a thread down if I wanted, or uh, if I do things like electronics sometimes, I will use it. Uh, especially if it's going outside, I'll paint it on the back of the circuit board, stop it rusting, that sort of thing. So it, uh, I, I just recalled our discussion the other the other day about um, nail, uh, nail, going out and buying nail varnish. Actually, quite versatile stuff is nail varnish.
Uh... Well, the answer it don't actually know if you're serious. Um, but if you are, the answer is you don't. <laughs> You mean in the game? Oh, okay. Um, a lot of a lot of fellas do. It seems. I mean, I don't have any statistics behind that, but you, uh, watching Twitch, you often see um, fellas playing uh, as a female character. Um, I don't know. Doesn't seem to be the other way around though. Well, not you know, when there's a choice it seems it does seem that females like to play as female characters and uh, sometimes fellas like to play as female characters as well. Oh oh yes oh of course, yes I see what you mean. Um I don't know I don't know uh, Rimworld that well uh, as to whether there is the ability to do that later on in the game with uh, when, when you get into all sort of the uh, the surgery aspects and things um because generally speaking I mean all the all the clothes and stuff like that are, um, are not gender specific from what I remember unless you're playing modded version of it and there's nothing particularly gender specific in the game at all. I can't think. No, there is. I mean, there is. There isn't anything particularly gender specific, is there? And I don't. I don't think they react to their names in any, you know, any shape or form. Mind you, I've never played the game. I've only ever watched people playing it, so I don't actually know. Hmm. I'm surprised, well, I kind of, I was about to say I'm surprised that's in the game, but maybe it's not that surprising, I mean, why shouldn't it be in the game? Maybe that just turns out to be one of those things where you just have to put up with the debuff that it gives you. As a <laughs> yeah, but so what? <laughs> type of thing. You can't do anything about it. And I am beginning to suspect you deliberately uh, omitted to mention you were talking about the game at the start. <laughs> but I don't mind. It was funny.
Note to self, in future, make rugs with solid colours. Not variable colours like this. I've got a feeling this is going to come back and bite me. Yeah, you seriously overestimated that, didn't you? <laughs> That's a pro that, that is the one problem with Twitch, is the stream lag. That is one thing that sort of mixer has going for it with uh, with FTL. You've got you can hold a real time discussion rather than having to think of things uh, in a sort of a thirty second uh, time gap. If we just sort of been having a real time conversation, I might have realised. Might not, but <laughs> I might have realised. When I'm streaming, I'm kind of hard to insult. <laughs> it's only slightly easier when I'm not streaming. That doesn't mean that anybody else who comes into the stream and tries it won't necessarily get banned. anybody that's watching Wolfie gets away with it because they've been in the stream a long time and they've established a reputation so I know when it's light-hearted somebody else comes into the stream and does it then that's being disrespectful so <laughs> I don't take that okay I wonder why that I'm getting just it's because of the way I'm pulling the thread out just along the edge the loops are very slightly longer it may mean I'll end up cutting them um, and it's because of the way I'm pulling the thread out I'm pulling it out and then holding it while I pull the thread long enough to be able to cut it off 
Uh, whereas when I'm doing a normal sort of loop, I'm, I'm just moving it to the next one. It drags just a little bit more of the thread back through the uh, canvas. So I shall have to bear that in mind. Otherwise I will have to sort of just you know, come down, cut the tops off of, of all of these threads like that, just to make them the, uh, the, the correct height. For that will normally be something I'll do when I've finished, not um, halfway through. case yes I mean a lot of a lot of people use that as an excuse you know oh it had this smile on the on the end you know you are the worst person in the world and I absolutely hate and detest you with a smile on the end what's that bit on the end supposed to do you know um, especially if you don't know somebody then that's just sort of uh, they're you know try they're trying to uh, they're trying to wind you up and that's their get out of jail free card and um, as I said you um, you get away with it because you have established your reputation of you know being in here uh, being a reasonable person and therefore I know you're joking and I find it funny and I just don't get upset by that sort of thing anyway but um, yeah, somebody else came in, they can put the biggest smiley face they like on the end of it and they'll, um, well, they'll get told off and then <laughs> if they do it again they get panned. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's it, isn't it? I mean, it's... That's what makes it kind of funny and amusing and what have you. But as I say, you, you kind of have to know a little bit about each other in order to uh, to do that and to, it to be funny as opposed to upsetting to some people. trying to think who it was and it may have been uh, one of the people that was just was in stream last week um, I think they came for, um, they came into the stream for the, uh, uh, the their very first visit and were, were ex sort of extremely I think insulting and um, actually sort of using what you might call vulgar language and I just, I know at the time I just said, rather sardonically, looked at the screen and said, Are you serious about that? What's the point? You know, why can't you, you know, you're not intelligent enough to speak English <laughs> uh, correctly, because they were English. Um, and at which point they apologised and they then followed and was in just about every stream and were, uh, for, for several months, I think it was, and uh, they interacted and were quite pleasant about it. It was was uh, quite funny in a way. I've forgotten who it was now. But they sort of became a long-term 
um, community member. I'm going to shortly have to uh, unroll this a little bit more.
Uh, because this little line is a little bit further, what I'm doing is spacing the rows a little bit further apart, but I'm putting the stitches closer together. So I'm still getting sort of a certain uh, level of packing into a particular area so that it doesn't sort of start to look sort of really soft and you can sort of see between the stitch, see the canvas between the stitches. Kind of a way of filling in the area without, in this particular case, um, working backwards and forwards to filling an area. Uh, um, because of the coloured wool, the different colours, I start and sort of do two, two or three rows, if you like, backwards and forwards. Then I might sort of end up changing colour in the wrong place and stuff like that, and it, fits. And it just will start to look even more odd. So I'm just using a sort of a different technique to. Uh, Get more stitches into an area uh, and, and level up the lines. Oops. Gotta be careful when you pull on an end like that, that is actually cut off. Because if it isn't, then that one wasn't quite. But I could have ended up with what he's doing. He's pulling a lot of stitches out. Kind of the one thing with canvas, and it with a few other things as well, it, it always sheds the end um, stuff. It's kind of hard to uh, to seam it first. I suppose I could have done. 
and maybe I'll think about doing that in the future. But uh, because one, even though I will sort of um, fold, do a fold, uh, fold seam on it, that will then get folded back over again this uh, this end bit here, and then get sewn onto the back of the material. That's hand sewn, unfortunately, but it'll probably just get tacked or or maybe blanket stitched or over stitched on the edge just to hold it back. But uh, yeah. Until then, it shreds. It sheds. Um, warp or weft threads, to give them the technical term, I suppose. Can never remember which one's which. One is the up and down, and one's the left to right. It's amazing what useless things are now. I don't quite know why I knew that, but... I probably learned that a long time ago when uh, I, I once got hold of uh, a fair few uh, shuttles as they're now which are used in weaving and um, or cloth weaving they're wooden things about this length and they've got pointed ends and they carry a bobbin in the middle with the thread on and, and it comes out through a couple of holes and these things are uh, um, when they uh, when they're weaving what they do what they've got is the, each of the vertical threads like this uh, are into, there's two sets interlaced so they're kind of interlaced like this and what they do is they raise one set and they fire this thing across and then they swap them over so they lower that set and raise the next set and they fire it back and that produces the under and over effect of, of this sort of weaving and these these things are fired backwards and forwards across the uh, across the material or across the threads of the material. Now these were from old weaving looms that I had; they were wooden, and apparently they fired. They were back then fired at something like 70 or 80 miles an hour across the uh, across this thing, and um, they fired across and they caught at the other end. And they just literally they're free floating. They just ride over the all the uh, the threads and the cut at the other end and immediately things change over and they're shot back. Uh, they're sort of within industry name for these things, the bullets, because they've got sharp, and I mean sharp, <laughs> metal caps on the end and they shoot across like bullets and uh, you don't want to be in the way of one of these things if when it's shot and uh, it's, it's kind of amazing, they're polished really really well so that they're really smooth, they don't catch on anything because you don't want one of these things tumbling. Uh, you know, it's shot at 70 miles an hour, you don't want one of these things tumbling and throwing, going anywhere in the machine. They're highly polished, there's, there's um, nothing nothing to catch on, everything's really smooth. The, the threads are fed out through little ceramic, um, they're called ferrules, but it's, it's kind of like a, a little ceramic tube. Um, uh, which the thread comes out of, and um, the thread is, co is, is you know, it's like cotton or whatever. Even though it feels smooth to touch, it actually and ceramic is like glass. It actually over time wears uh, a groove into into the ceramic uh, fevels, and if it happens to go across a particular part of the wooden body, as it were, then it would quite quickly cut a groove in the wood. Uh, and that's one reason why they, you know, they, uh, a shuttle would get retired is because the ferrules had got um, grooved so much that it was either snapping the threads or catching or, or rubbing them too much. And uh, you used to be able to get hold of them. What you really have to do is clean them up because they'd be, relatively speaking, quite dirty. So give them a good clean. But they're always polished you know, and, and so you, 
you uh, polish them, either wax them or um, varnish them. Uh, so they, and they, they looked really quite nice sort of objects, but sort of quite lethal uh, weaving apparatus. Amazing things. I don't know what they use these days. I guess they're sort of plastic or perhaps even metal uh, to uh, to do the sort of job. But because um, you, yeah, they, they have to be a certain weight to to have the momentum and the mass to carry them across. And, it, and I think the looms were, looms are something like twenty or thirty feet wide. So you can imagine this thing has to rock it across there because those things motor. I mean, they when you see a loom at full production speed. Is sort of the material is literally traveling just you know just like this if you see what I mean you know it's it's moving that fast it's an amazing sort of um, thing to watch I, never, I used to have, uh, um, I'll say I used to have one I just said I used to have some but I, I did keep one, and I've no idea what happened to it. It's one of those things that you never remember, and you, you always sort of think, I wouldn't throw this away, and yet I don't have it anymore. And I have no recollection of throwing it away, I've no reason to think I would have thrown it away, and I can't even think of a reason why I would throw it away, even if I had sort of a reason, if you see what I mean. So, Stuff just disappears. There must be ma magic elves that sneak in during the night and lift some of these things and take them away. Right. Um, I rule. Okay, we'll get another row in. I was going to say I probably can't get another row in here, but I probably can actually if I'm careful, just at this end. But then we've got to unravel some more of this canvas. And that wool's gone tight. So let's unravel some more wool first. About now I begin to wonder whether I'm going to have enough of this cord wool. Yeah, it's not bad. 
I was just checking what the other side of this feels like. But when we get to the white I'll turn it over and actually have a look. Yeah, that's not too bad. A lot of those ro ro uh, rows are further apart than these in some places. They, uh, with with enough packed into the row, it kind of fills in the gap. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't feel soft or anything, which is soft. By soft, I mean it doesn't feel sparse. Odd areas like this one here feel sort of what I describe as soft, that the, um, in areas like this there's enough uh, loops around where you're pressing to support the loops that you are pressing on. In areas where it's soft, and that's one of them, there isn't. They're, you know, they're a bit too sparse, you can see the canvas between them. One way around that, and I might do it at the end, is I can come back with a yellow part of the wall and just do some extra ones in amongst that. And that can sort of uh, pack them a little bit tighter. And um, that's not going too bad. So I've got a straight edge on this edge, yeah. That's kind of the other thing with the canvas that stretches. What I want to be careful of is that I've got a reasonably straight edge on this edge here. Which I have, so I don't sort of want to stretch this so that this end goes as well. Ow.
That one went a little bit wonky. Yeah, I'm not sure if that connects one really well, otherwise that will look out of place. But again, I can always go back in and put some in. Right, I need to make this. Uh, extend it a little bit. Push the wood in more or less as far as I can get. So I don't, ideally I don't want more that much out. I suppose I could always tip the wood on its end, but we'll see how that goes. Because I went wonky there, what I'm going to do here is come back very close to this row. A little bit closer than normal, just to support it. You won't think there's so much technicalities in the snagging needle thing, would you? Okay. Each of these stitches need mutual support, you see. Maybe I should set up one of these type of half lines for them. This is a little bit long, so it's causing me to slow down a little bit. What I could do here is do a crossover. If I hop over there like that, swap these two rows over. As that wall is starting to go orange, what we'll do is we'll hop back over that. We were nearly in that position anyway. And carry on from here. That wall is getting a little bit in a tangle.
egg serve it itself right? Yeah, I suppose let's fill that in a bit. Okay. Right, because I don't want to leave that needle hanging there, I'm just going to cut that off because that's all I'm going to do for tonight. I'm going to do another row now. Uh, yeah, it was a bit sparse. Just there, but not a problem. We'll just do extra ones when we come back across there. But as you can see, you can start to see the um, triangles now. I think the black one is going to come through the white rather than the white through the black. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I could do a different colour in the middle, but I'm going to do a solid, uh, solid triangle. So the black one will go in front of the white one. And we've got a green one coming down here. Um, so I'm going to leave it for tonight. Uh, I could do with the stretching a little bit anyway. And I, as I mentioned, near the start of the stream, I've got this laptop I want to take a look at. So I'll start stripping it out tonight. So I shall do that as well. I shall go watch uh, Wolfie's broadcast. Um, hopefully, <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't forget between he here and there, if I have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Um, and we shall carry on with this, probably carry on with this tomorrow. It'll either be this or we'll do some of the magic dots, the diamond painting. Uh, I don't mind either, actually. So I may, may do some more of this uh, this rug. In fact, I could actually put some more of the black and white in and the green in, because we've now got plenty of space to do it. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, that's just as fun to watch anyway. We'll see, I'll see the broadcast start. Um, Is this perhaps, perhaps this perhaps I shouldn't say that, but you do know you can delete recordings, can not you? <laughs> you can also export them to YouTube, um, which is what I do. So you will be able to see this broadcast again tomorrow night on uh, YouTube from approximately 9 p.m. or exclusively on Twitch for the next 24 hours. And then, uh, and then on YouTube. So if you do want to see, anybody wants to see any of the old broadcasts, Zaraganart. No, YouTube. Zaraganart. Yeah, YouTube.com slash Zaraganart. I'll get it right eventually. The shop's the other way around, Zaraganart.ac.com. Um, and of course, Twitter.com slash Zaraganart. Facebook.com slash Zaraganart. <laughs> I'll get them right. Uh, no, I don't know any of the others. Well, other than delegateout.com, which is my own website, of course. Work in progress, but it's getting there eventually. Uh, okay, so anybody who's watching, uh, it'd be fantastic if you'd follow and subscribe if you would like to support the channel. Plus, these are which go towards helping out with the materials and things that get used on stream. If you do want to see the next stream, it will be tomorrow night from approximately 7 pm UK time. That's currently GMT or UTC. And uh, I will start soon after then as an evening meal allows. And if I have any reason I am unable to uh, stream, keep an eye out on Twitter as I will most likely tweet if I can't. Um, but I will almost certainly tweet when I go live, which may be just as good as following me here on Twitch. So, Wolfie, thank you very much. Uh, the person who does it always thinks it's bad. Other people don't always notice. So don't apologise before somebody else has told you it's bad. <laughs> um, thank you for watching, Wolfie. Anybody else as well, thank you for watching. Hope I'll see you on the next stream. Bye for now. You shouldn't have any, any pyromaniacs in there, you should get rid of all the pyromaniacs. But that's part of the game. Good luck with the next time you try it. <laughs>